meeting. Um, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of July 22nd, 2014. Uh, any discussion on these minutes? Does anybody have a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the uh, July 22nd meeting, 2014. Anybody second? Second. All in favor? So it's five to nothing to approve the minutes of the July 22nd, 2014 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, we don't have any old business, so we'll move right on to the new business. Uh, the first matter, <coughs> excuse me, is to hear the request of Luis Bilodeau, the owner of the property at 1114 Sawyer Road, map R04, lot 49A, to create an accessory dwelling unit in the basement of an existing single family dwelling. Hi, my name is Louise Billado, and this is Michael Bomser. We live at 1114 um, Sawyer Road, um, and we're seeking permission um, to um, create an in law apartment in an existing space in our house. Would you like us to go through? Yeah, if you could uh, kind of give us a little bit more background and then just some details, um, anything you want to highlight in your application, uh, feel free. Okay. Well, it, we, um, this house was purchased early this spring. We moved in early this spring. Um, one of the main reasons was because the basement level of this is a walkout, um, has a nice layout, which would be very appropriate for a, you know, a nicely scaled apartment, and our interest is to have immediate family reside with us, Louise's parents. So, um, you know, we've gone in preparation for the application. We've gotten the, the land surveyed to confirm that we are to size. We've had the septic inspected and making sure that it's working and in sound condition. It's a reasonably new system. Um, <clears throat> and then just doing the calculations in trying to properly scale an apartment for that house. Just, this will be an in-law uh, apartment? Correct. Correct. And, uh, one, two, three. Um, for two for people. Residents? For Louise's parents, mother and father. Mm -hmm. I, I was a little confused by the inclusion of the um, notice of intent to install a subsurface wastewater disposal system. Is it your intention to absolutely do that, or is, or you think that the current one is is sufficient? We believe that the system is sound and and in in good condition to uh, to. Uh, accept the additional flow in the apartment, but because an, an apartment is scaled differently um, than what our current uh, system is rated at, you know, we, we're using the home as a three bedroom home um, and it's a four bedroom system. So, but I, uh, what we were hoping is by showing the ability to expand that we would at least be prepared to make changes when we needed, but currently keep the system after, you know, while still putting in the apartment. So it's, it's rated, it's rated for that capacity. And at this point, it looks like it'll, it'll work for you then. I, I, I believe technically it's rated just below, but it's very slight. Okay. Hey Ben, what goes into your review for a building permit relative to the, the septic system? I, I reviewed their septic design and it meets it meets the state code and it, it it's not required to be installed based based on the state subsurface rules you're you're allowed to do uh, you're allowed to do minor expansions of septic systems without physically installing the system if you if you go through this specific process which which they went through and demonstrate that you have the soils to do the expansion notify your neighbors of the possible expansions and, and get the system permitted. 
Uh, so you, you take every step except the physical installation of the system, and then you don't have to physically install it until you need to. Oh, okay. So within within the requirements of 19-7-5, where it says uh, B1, where we need the applicant needs to demonstrate compliance with the town sewage ordinance. That's they're in compliance. They're in compliance with that. The sewage ordinance basically says you need to be in compliance with the state code, <clears throat> and this is in compliance with the state code. Thank you. Uh, can you describe? I, I've read somewhere in the materials that there's a pathway that you're creating. That's and I see your I see your scale, your boundary survey. Is it on here, or can you kind of just describe where does it is the, going? The path, the exi does the path exist on the boundary survey currently? It's at the I, I don't know if it does or it, it does not. It yeah, has not okay. been constructed yet. It would be part of the renovation would be to provide a proper pathway. Okay, and so. But it does, it would comply with the descriptions in getting a conditional use permit, which is directly off of parking and <clears throat> So it would have fair. It would have. So it, I'm, I'm, so I'm just trying to get a flavor for where where it would be going. Is it going? Uh, and again, I'm looking at this boundary survey. Is it going? Where's it going? It, it's going. I guess it would be the um, front of the house to the. It would be the southwest. So from around the front of the house to the side, which is the property adjacent to the the federal preserve land. So is it going to the left of the garage? I do have the full side. I know. Are you guys all looking um, at the boundary survey? Because I do have the full. Ben had requested that I bring this. Would you like to look at? Is there any reason to? Yeah, I'm looking at the boundary survey. Okay. And, and just is it coming from like behind behind the garage? Like no, it's no. coming around. Across, it, would, it would be an extension side. of the existing brick walkway. I see. And go around the house. Got it. Yeah. All the way around. Because the entrance is from the very back Correct. of the house. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's the, there's, it appears that there's enough parking for one additional car, a car dedicated, a parking spot dedicated to the. Yes, the it, in, a, in a first row situation, there are space for three cars side by side, but the depth of our driveway could even accept cars beyond that and be within five feet from, you know, in five feet from the road. requirements for a conditional use permit it looks as though and again, just reading through the application that they're that they've complied with all the requirements for conditional use yes yeah. I believe that they have for the applicant. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, any public comment relating to this application? And then presumably notice went out to abutters and yes. nothing was received in response? We did not receive any comments. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd open it up for board discussion. 
I mean, I, I certainly don't see anything problematic with this application. It seems like uh, they, <coughs> they meet the requirements for um, a conditional use permit and also um, the additional requirements for creation of an accessory dwelling unit under 1975. I agree. Okay. Yeah, agreed all the dimensional requirements are, are met, I feel. Anybody have a motion? I guess I would move to approve the request for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwe dwelling unit in part of the basement of an existing single family dwelling at 1114 Sawyer Road. Second. I'll second it. All in favor? That passes <coughs> five to nothing. Um, I'm going to read the findings of fact. This is a request for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit in part of the basement of an existing single family dwelling per section 19 7 5 of the zoning ordinance. Subject property is 1114 Sawyer Road, map R04, lot 49A. Luis Bilodeau is the owner of record. No expansion or exterior changes are proposed for the house. Additional findings of fact. One, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. Three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. Five, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. And six, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements in section 19-7-5B of the zoning ordinance. Uh, all in favor of the findings of fact and additional findings of fact? Five nothing. Thank you. Thank you, All right, we'll now move on to the next item of new business, which is to hear the request of David Matero Architecture to replace and expand an existing non conforming garage at 20 Woodland Road, map U1, lot 23 based on section 19-4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance. Good evening. Uh, I'm John Norton. This is my wife, Nancy. We are the owners of 20 Woodland Road. We've been there since 1981. Um, yes. 1981. And we intend to continue there for a while longer yet. And so what we want to do is we want to do some renovations to the house and the garage so that we can kind of age in place when that time comes far in the future from where we are right now. So what we want to do is expand, lengthen the garage a bit so that we can put a staircase, a real staircase, up to the second floor of the garage instead of using a pull-down stair that we have currently. So we've asked uh, David Matero here to do the design work and do the architectural work on the, on the project, and he's here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm David Matero. I'm an architect uh, from Bath. The um, existing non-conforming structure is tucked away in the corner. Uh, this is uh, Woodland right here in Warren Avenue. <clears throat> it's a small garage uh, with a studio upstairs. Uh, it's about a 20-foot square uh, structure. What we'd like to do is, because we want to uh, continue using it as a garage, uh, we need to... Um, uh, 
and not use the fold down staircase anymore. Uh, we're hoping to put a staircase in the back of the garage and then you arrive sort of in the middle because the ridge is not very high. So there's enough usable space upstairs right going down the middle. But when, once we put our stairs back here, we're not going to be able to put a, a car in there anymore. Um, we're not proposing to raise the roof. What we would like to do is add dormers on both sides. They don't go to the edge of the wall, but they would allow us to increase our headroom upstairs. Um, and then because our staircase is in the back, we're hoping to um, make the garage about four feet larger, or longer, I should say. It'd be towards, towards the road. Um, and we would not be, we're not encroaching any further on the side lots. So we're not, we're not creating an, uh, an exi we're not increasing the nonconformity of the structure. We're, we'll be going parallel to the lot line. And by doing that, we'll have to rotate the garage about a degree to do that. <clears throat> so uh, we're not increasing the nonconformity. We're not increasing the height. Uh, we're increasing the length, which, which moves it towards uh, Woodland Avenue. Um, and uh, by uh, creating dormers on both sides, we're increasing the headroom, but we're not doing anything to the, um, to the roof, you know, to the height of the roof. Can I ask? I'm can I yes. just ask one yeah. quick, it's, it's, it's probably central to this whole thing. Tell me again why this is not increasing a nonconformity, existing nonconformity, if you're, if you're lengthening it by four, four feet. Well, I guess, well, we're not, <clears throat> um, well, we're not, we're, the, the, we're currently, I have a dimension on the other side. We're currently four feet eight approximately from that, from the side lot here. Mm -hmm. So we're not, we're not, we're not decreasing that in any way. It's maintaining the four foot eight dimension. But yes, yeah, so you're right. If the, if the setback is 10 feet, um, uh, it, there are other cases in, uh, that you're, well, anyway, that, so I, yeah, you're right. We're not, <laughs> we're, um, uh, we're not getting any closer to the lot line than we already are, is what I, is what I'm saying. The area is increasing, Correct. but the, but the nonconformity relative to the set, setback is, is not increasing. Correct. Okay. Sorry. Ben? Okay. I think Ben wanted to add something. Clarifying point. We, we do have a definition of increasing nonconformity in the zoning ordinance, and this would not be an increase in nonconformity by, by definition because we're, because we're not getting closer to the property line. It is, however, am, am I correct in saying it's, it's expanding the original building footprint and increasing the number of square feet of floor area? Yes. Well, the, uh, I suppose there are, you have a packet of existing photos. You can see there are other structures, you know, behind this that are, you know, uh, you know as sort of at the lot line. Um, if you look at the top left photo that's in your, in your packet, you can see that uh, there are you know, other fences. And we're, we're not sort of... Um, uh, that, that area is going to stay just as it is because the roof, the walls stay just as they are. Um, and again, by not increasing the height, except by adding the dormers, um, which doesn't increase the height, uh, I don't think we're sort of, we're not really impacting this corner. It's still going to stay as it is in relation to the neighbors. What's the existing foundation on that garage? It's just a slab? Or? It's not a very good slab. And, and that'll be removed and replaced? Yeah, it, it'll, it'll have to be, right? We, the, I think, and, and I, 
the structure we think was built in 1929, and it's um, uh, it needs to be. They need some TLC. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Um, so it, that's where the this sort of rotation comes into play. So it's exactly we have the ability because we're going to have to remove it just to so that we don't you know increase that and we can sure. rotate it a little bit. Yeah. So today it's not. It looks like it's not parallel to the to the property. Correct. Boundary. Right. Could you, could you point out, is there a photo of the, the side view of the existing garage that, that's to be lengthened, as, essentially? Oh, well, so the side here, there's a door currently on the side. Um, and this face right here, which is a road, would be coming towards us four feet. So this would be coming out four feet. Sure. And uh, there used to be you know, shed dormers on both sides. Um, uh, and again, the, the, it's also important to note those shed dormers don't come out to the face of the walls, so it's not like the walls get any higher. Sure. Have there been any letters, one way or the other, in support of the application? I, I have not received any letters. Any other questions by the board? Uh, well, I have one question. What's the purpose for the rotation? Uh, so that when we move it out four feet, we don't in encroach onto that lot line by another inch or two. So if we can rotate it and go parallel to the lot line, we're not getting, making it closer to the lot. So that dimension of If we didn't rotate it, we would end up being like four feet seven. Mm -hmm. So we want to be no closer than four feet eight so that we're not increasing the nonconformity. So there's a practical problem. So expanding, expanding the garage to four feet without the rotation, because it would impact the setback of ah. four foot seven. Correct. Or we could keep the rotation and just move it over a couple of inches. I mean, we don't have to rotate it if we want to maintain the same rotation. We just move it. That would be uh, north a couple of inches. 
we, I asked this question. There's, um, there's like two things going on. Um, maybe it's just me, but I was just thinking there's two issues that we have to grapple with. One is um, changing the orientation of the, uh, although it's hyper um, little, as it were, the, the orientation, and then expanding the footprint of the garage. And so I'm seeing it as two items. Um, um, okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any public comment? Okay. No public comment. Um, so I'd like to open it up for board discussion. Footprint is increasing, but it's not increasing. It's not. It's not increasing the nonconformity relative to the setbacks. So, I think, based upon how the the ordinance is written, it would it would essentially be compliant. On the, I don't have an issue with the expanding by four feet. I need some. Uh, understanding uh, for the purposes of rotating it, because I, I'm looking at it as a, uh, a hard interpretation from the non-conformance, and then just there's a section at the beginning that talked about it, you can only do one of two things, I think. Is that right? Um, renovation, repair. Re reconstruction or replacement. Thank you. So if we put it in the purposes of reconstruction, I think this is all within that purview. If it um, changed the orientation to pacify a setback issue to get allowance of the four feet is uh, not straightforward. I, I was more inclined to say that it's a reconstruction correction. But it still falls under. No, B3. What page are you on? I am on 38. Reconstruction or replacement. I was just looking to see if reconstruction is defined, and I don't believe it is in the definition section. Because I was just, you know, if, if reconstruction was defined as building exactly where yes. it was, I mean, since it's not defined, I'm more comfortable with changing the orientation slightly of a structure that you are reconstructing. Nothing says that. I don't see anything that says something that's reconstructed has to be exactly where it was before. Well, although, I won't read the entire sentence, but um, third, you know, kind of ending the within the original building footprint. Uh, yeah. And so the building or structure will be located within the original building footprint. Will not increase the number of square feet of the floor area and will not create or expand any nonconformities. Um, but again, but, but uh, the, however, but right when however, right, which is why we're yeah that would be allowed without coming here, coming to us for approval. So, so basically, it falls. This is why we're here, right. <laughs> the CBA, as, as far as whether the setback requirement is being met to the greatest practical extent, and it's being met because of a one-degree orientation of the footprint. So the center of the unit, the dwelling, of the garage, remains. The axis rotates on that pivot. Is that right? I think it. I think it's going to rotate about the back corner. what it appears to me. I should have paid attention better in geometry class. <laughs> so if the footprint of the garage remains static, and we, if that is, the, um, sorry, to pick up John's point, it can be rotated because it's not impacting a setback, right? So, what? Go ahead, no, go. So if you rotate it, so, because it has not moved forward or backwards, it is merely 
It has been it's static to its location. All it is rotating clockwise and counterclockwise. Now, if we move it forward or backwards, that's the, I think is a different issue, technical opiate. Um, and then I think the other issue is that expanding the, the garage to four feet, long ways to the street, is, is perhaps an easier burden, an easier hurdle to get past. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that do we have a paragraph or provision that allows us the discretion to say, right, the footprint hasn't changed because the unit has stayed the same. All it is is on a repair or renovation. It's fixing the, the um, foundation, the, the slab, uh, and also addressing to ensure that there is no further impact on that setback with the four feet. Go ahead. Uh, I would almost argue, actually I will argue, that that if we believe that the setback is being met to the greatest practical extent, then whether it's pivoting one degree, I'll use an exaggeration, or 15 degrees is, is up to us. So long as, as we believe it's being met, the, the setback requirement is being met to the greatest practical extent. So the original footprint almost is irrelevant based upon how we feel about they're, they're meeting that setback requirement. I agree. Now, would I feel differently if it was a 15% degree? I guess it would depend where the setback is, but what, one degree? I didn't take geometry, but I take materiality. <laughs> so. so that's fine. There's a provision in the last one for the discussion. Okay. All right, so if that is, issue is set aside, how about the extending of the garage for four feet? It doesn't increase the nonconformity. It does expand. I mean, and the reason, again, it's, it's before us is because it will um, increase the number of square feet of floor area. But we can permit that, provided that such reconstruction is in compliance with setback requirements, which we've dealt with. Determining, and then we get down to the 1943B1. And I know that it's that B2. Yeah. Sorry, B2. It says B3 in the ordinance, but it's B2. So we need, need to consider the B2 factors. Which are um, the size of the lot, the slope of the land the potential for soil erosion, the location of the structures on the property, on adjacent properties, location of septic system, if any, other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type of amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the location. Extending forward, so it's not going to affect vegetation. I mean, it's, it's coming forward into the driveway. Yep. Impact on views, they're adding dormers, but it's not going to impact views. One of the questions that we didn't ask is whether there are other homes on that street that have garages closer or further away from the road. Um, and I think there was a um, it's the same neighborhood where there's a, uh, a porch that was uh, granted. The purpose is, again, much closer to the, to the street. Um, so this is further away from it. And that, that is required for a variance to compare yeah. the properties nearby. But not this is a variance for this. Right. Any other discussion? Anybody like to make a motion? We'll make a motion to approve the request of 
Nancy Norton to reconstruct and enlarge a non-conforming garage structure at 20 Woodland Road. Second. What was the, um, can I suggest a motion that uh, is a little bit more closely tied to the language that was <laughs> in the agenda, just so it has the, a little, a little more specificity. Mm -hmm. um, to grant the request of David Matera Architecture to replace and expand an existing non-conforming garage at 20 Woodland Road, map U1, lot 23, based on section 19-4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance. Is that a motion? I adopt that motion. This is so moved. <laughs> Sounds like a friendly amendment, well, whatever we call it. <laughs> Whose motion is that? Yours? There's a motion. The There's already a motion. So Would you like to so amend yes. your yes. motion to? He's amending his motion to so state as I <laughs> stated. Yes. And now we need a second. Mike seconds. All in favor? All right. Passes 5-0. Uh, findings of fact. This is a request of David Matera Architecture representing Nancy Norton to reconstruct and enlarge a non-conforming garage structure, 19-4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance. Subject property is 20 Woodland Road, map U01, lot 23. Nancy Norton is the owner of the record for the subject property. 20 Woodland Road is a non-conforming lot in the RC zone. There is currently a non-conforming detached garage structure along with a single family dwelling on the lot. Additional findings of fact. One, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties the location of the septic system and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. And three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. All in favor? I have nothing. Thank you. Um, Next section is communications. I don't believe we have any communications with the board. And do I have a motion to adjourn? I'd like a motion to adjourn the meeting. All in favor? We're adjourned.